6 through 8. In the Pew Bible, it's page 43. Therefore say to the Israelites, I am the Lord, and I will bring you out from under the yoke of the Egyptians. I will free you from bringing slaves to them. I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and with mighty acts of judgment. I will take you as my own people, and I will be your God. Then you will know that I am the Lord your God, who brought you out from under the yoke of the Egyptians. And I will bring you to the land I swore with uplifted hand to give to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. I will give it to you as a possession. I am the Lord. The New Testament lesson is from Galatians chapter 5, verses 1 and 13 through 16. In the Pew Bible, it's page 825. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then, and do not let yourselves be burned again by the yoke of slavery. You, my brothers, were called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge the sinful nature. Rather, serve one another in love. The entire law is summed up in a single command. Love your neighbor as yourself. If you keep on biting and devouring each other, watch out or you will be destroyed by each other. So I say, live by the Spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the sinful nature. The Gospel of the Lord is from John chapter 8. Verse 31 through 36, page 758 in the Pew Bible. Will you please rise for the gospel? To the Jews who had believed him, Jesus said, If you hold to my teachings, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered him, we are Abraham's descendants and have never been slaves of anyone. How can you say that we shall be set free? Jesus replied, I tell you the truth. Everyone who sins is a slave to sin. Now a slave has no permanent place in the family, but a son belongs to it forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. Here ends the reading of the lessons. You may be seated. As World War II was about to begin, Franklin Roosevelt, our president, spoke of four freedoms for which America was fighting. Freedom of speech and expression, freedom of religion, freedom from want, and freedom from fear. Jesus spoke about freedom too. In John 8, 31 and 32, Jesus said, If you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. It's interesting to me that in verse 31, it says, to the Jews who had believed him, Jesus said these things. Jesus said to them, if you continue in my word, or if you hold to my teaching, then you are really my disciples. It's no large thing, really, if you think about it, to believe Jesus. Lots of people believed him, but then they fell away. For instance, multitudes of disciples. There were thousands of people that followed him. And when, when Jesus chose the 12 apostles, for instance, the Bible talks about he, he cho he, his disciples came to him and he chose 12. So there was a much larger group that he chose the 12 from. Multitudes ate the, dis the uh, loaves and fishes, but they all fell away except for the 12. When Jesus spoke a difficult saying, when he said, I am the bread of life. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. At that time, as I said, most all of them left except for the twelve. In John 8, the same people who believe Jesus in verse 30, in verse 44, Jesus calls them children of the devil because now they're ready to kill him. So they only believed him so far. And of course, there's also the example of Judas Iscariot. He obviously believed Jesus, at the beginning at least, but he was the one who 
uh, betrayed Jesus to his death. He did not continue in Jesus' word. Jesus said of him, of Judas, it would be better if he had never been born. Many people hear the word, but their hearts are rocky soil or the thorny soil or perhaps the pathway where Satan takes the word all together away. And all these do not continue in his word. So it's not those who begin the race who win the prize, it's those who finish. As Jesus said, whoever stands firm to the end will be saved. Jesus said, you are really my disciples. Continue in his word and you become a true disciple. Many people call themselves Christians who don't spend any time either reading or obeying Christ's word. Abraham Lincoln once told a parable saying, if a sheep has a tail that's long enough to touch the ground, and I call it a, ta- call it a leg, how many legs does a sheep have? Well, it only has four. Because no matter what you call that tail, it's still a tail. Just because you call the tail a leg doesn't make it one. And in the same way, just saying you're a Christian doesn't make you one. But faithfully holding to His teaching, continuing in His Word, abiding in Him, following Him actively, that's what makes you a Christian. And it's something that we grow into as well as become. If you continue in His Word, you are truly a disciple. Jesus said, then you will know the truth. Discipleship. Continuing in Christ's Word causes us to learn truth. We learn to know truth because, as the Bible says, God is not a man that He should lie. Some people talk about, are there things that God cannot do? Yes, there are things He cannot do. He cannot lie. He is the truth. And we learn truth if we continue in His Word because Jesus Christ Himself is the way, the truth in the life, because He created all things, and because nothing can be created from a lie, and because He is the wisdom of God, when we continue in Christ and in His Word, we will know the truth. Knowing Jesus is knowing truth. And Jesus went on to say, then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Or because Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, Jesus will set you free. What will He set you free from? Very quickly, I can think of four freedoms also. And you can probably think of more. If we were to try to come up with a big list, we probably could. I read a commentary where the author also came up with four freedoms. I think that's kind of a, a common tendency as we think of four freedoms as part of our consciousness ever since FDR's speech at least. But in this commentary, two of his freedoms that he came up with were identical to the uh, ones I came up with, but two were different. What does that mean? Does that mean one of us is right and one of us is wrong? I think it means that Jesus was not overselling himself. Jesus was not exaggerating when he said, If the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. We're free from all sorts of things. We're truly free. Free of anything that hinders you or keeps you from God, certainly. And so here's the four I came up with. First of all, Jesus sets us free from fear. How big is that these days, to be free from fear? The whole world is gripped with fear. Panic, whatever word we call it, uh, worry or confusion or consternation, there's fear all around and we can almost feel it. And yet, the most beloved psalm in the Bible, Psalm 23, most people know it, even if they don't really know by the title, but they've heard it. And verse 4 says, Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? Why? For you are with me, you, my good shepherd. You, the Lord, are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. And Psalm 118, which is really an echo of several psalm verses, verse 6 says, The Lord is with me. 
I will not be afraid. What can anyone do to me? Jesus often said, Fear not, I am. Now in our Bible, it usually says, Fear not, it is I. Fear not, I'm here. Fear not, I'm with you. But usually, or oftentimes, He simply said, literally, Fear not, I am. Identifying Himself with the Lord who appeared to Moses. The Lord who gave the Ten Commandments. The Lord Jehovah. Fear not, I am. One of the clearest and most often repeated messages in the Bible from God to us is simply, fear not. If God is for us, who can be against us? Jesus sets us free from fear. Secondly, Jesus sets us free from sin. You could make a a case, this is the whole theme of Romans 6 through 8, or perhaps even the whole letter of Romans. Let me give you a couple of verses just as an example. In Romans 6, uh, verses 6 and 7 and verse 18, Paul writes this, We know that our old self was crucified with Christ, so that the body of sin might be done away with, so that we should no longer be slaves to sin, because anyone who has died has been freed from sin. In verse 18, You have been set free from sin and have become slaves to righteousness. The Apostle John is very simple in his uh, description of being set free from sin. He says in 1 John chapter 4, There is no fear in love. And he says that after he goes to great lengths to show us that God is love. There is no fear in love. Therefore, there is no fear in God. And in Revelation verse uh, chapter 1, from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth, to him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood. Jesus sets us free. That is the whole point of Jesus coming to earth and dying on the cross. He suffered the punishment for sin that we all deserve. Jesus sets us free from sin. Thirdly, Jesus sets us free from the tyranny of the law. And most of us, I think, when we think of the law, we think of the Ten Commandments, and that's certainly a clear expression of God's law. And yet we wonder, how can we be free from that? We're not free from the Ten Commandments, are we? Well, no, we're not. But Paul tells us the law is spiritual, and it is holy. It's perfect, the Psalms Psalm 19 says, But we're also told that whoever obeys the law will live by it. The catch, no one can obey the law. Therefore, we won't live because of obeying the law. We're doomed because we can't keep it. Paul says in Romans 3, All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And we don't have to look very far or live very long to see the truth of that statement. But Jesus did obey the law. He obeyed all of it. And we're fully justified. We're perfect in God's sight by faith in Jesus Christ, who did keep the law. And in His atoning work for us, He died on the cross. Paul says this just a few verses after pointing out that we're all sinful. He said, For we maintain a man is justified by faith apart from obeying the law. Then as we read in Galatians chapter 5, it is for freedom Christ has set us free. Stand firm and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. And he was talking about slavery to obeying the law. Our slavery is to the voice of the Lord who lives inside of us to obey the following of the Spirit. Because when we obey the Spirit, The law is perfectly kept. Jesus sets us free from the tyranny of a law that we cannot keep. And fourthly, Jesus sets us free from death and hell. And no one really wants to die. We read of people that commit suicide. I just read in the paper today of the... uh, 
a gentleman that was fixing to go under trial and they he had a shootout with the police and uh, it was discovered I can't remember his name but you'd all recognize it from the news in Paducah but uh, he was uh, he said he preferred death to life in prison but nobody really wants to die we want to live it's implanted in us and no one really wants to go to hell though there's some people that say they do I'd rather uh, how's the, the saying go, I think, from John Milton? I'd rather rule in hell than, than uh, be subject in heaven or something like that. And most of us would rather, or some people say they'd rather just go and party. You know, that's, you know, hell is for the party people anyways. But they don't know what hell is. Hell's not a party. Hell's eternal fire. Hell is worms and maggots eating our body. And yet we're alive forever to suffer in that torment. Jesus' word for hell was Gehenna, the valley of ben Hinnom, which was the garbage dump of Jerusalem, which they set on fire. That fire never went out. We, we package up our garbage in neat little plastic bags and you know, we throw them out in the dumpster or whatever and we don't really smell too much. But can you imagine if we all took it to one spot and set the whole stinking mess of fire? Can you imagine what Jerusalem was like if the wind was in the wrong direction? And that's hell. That's, that's a little picture of it. Except sit. Okay, you know, the story of Job. All his possessions were taken away. His health was taken away. And he sat on a pile of ashes. What if he was sitting in that garbage dump that's burning the whole time? That's hell. And worst of all, God's not there. Jesus isn't there. We have no hope. Nothing to look forward to. Nothing good ever happening. And we're in the midst of this burning, stinking garbage. And for company, we have demons. And the devil, devil isn't going to rule in hell either. The devil's going to suffer like everybody else. In fact, he'll suffer worse. Hell's not a party. But apart from Christ, that's exactly where everyone is headed. But since Christ died for us, and He offers to us the free gift of salvation by faith in Him, we need not fear death or hell. The Bible says it's appointed unto man to die once, and after that the judgment. But that death that we suffer in this world is only of our flesh. That second death, the one in the fire that never goes out, that's the one we need not fear. The resurrection of Jesus Christ assures us that He can deliver on His promise to save to the uttermost all who come to Him. In Hebrews chapter 2, it's written that since the children have flesh and blood, he too, that is Christ, shared in their humanity so that by his death he might destroy him who holds the power of death, that is the devil, and free those who all their lives were held in slavery by their fear of death. The devil's been destroyed. We don't have to worry about him. He has no power, no power over death or hell anymore. Romans chapter 8. Paul writes this. The Spirit Himself t testifies with our spirit. We are God's children. If we are children, then we are heirs. Heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. That means whatever Christ has inherited, we get it to share with it. Christ came to rule the earth. We get to rule with Him. Christ came. He lives forever. We get to live forever with Him. Jesus said when he came to the tomb of Lazarus, 
I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me will live even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Jesus, if we continue in his word and abide in him, Jesus sets us free from death and hell. We do well to celebrate our nation, founded as a Christian nation, on biblical principles, and to celebrate and enjoy the freedoms America has to offer. But even greater are the freedoms that God gives us through Jesus Christ, and His freedoms are eternal. To God be the glory now and forever. Amen.